Does your car suspension clank? Or maybe it just clunks? Or could it be that it's just a good old fashioned bang that you feel rattling around underneath your feet? Then today's video might just be for you. Today we're going after these guys' stabilizer bar end links. They can be very obnoxious when they go bad. Now I'll be demonstrating on my 2008 Honda Element where they are, what they do, and how to fix them, but they are common failure points on most modern day suspension systems. Now this Element has four of them, two in the front, two in the rear. I'll only be swapping out the front ones. The procedure to change the rears is virtually identical. Now whether or not you're going to be tackling this job yourself or you had a mechanic lay some gobbledygook on you and you just want to know what they were talking about, then I've got you covered. Let's jump into the live action. So to begin with, I do have the car up off the ground and supported on a jack stand, of course. Do not ever get underneath your car without a jack stand, please. And uh, what I've also done is I've turned the wheel so the tires are pointing to the right, which will make it easier to see the area that we're looking at here. So if we come in behind to this point right here, this is your sway bar end link. This is your sway bar, travels under the car and on the other tire, it is set up exactly the same with this link here. What the purpose of that is, is when this tire goes up, it pushes down on the other side. It's supposed to help keep your car tires in contact with the road when you're going over a bumpy surface. Now what can happen with the sway bar end link is that they can break, get old, or they can start making a lot of noise. And if you want to test that for yourself to see what you're looking at, you can come in with like a screwdriver or some kind of pry bar and kind of get behind it. And then you can move the end link and listen for any noise. This one's actually pretty quiet. The other side is quiet also, but I've already got the parts that came with the suspension kit that I have. So I went ahead and decided I'm going to switch these out. If you have a impact wrench, your job is going to be much easier. Also, if you don't live in the rust belt, I'm going to uh, take this lower bolt off here with my impact wrench, do the same on the other side, and then I'm going to go under and disconnect the sway bar from the car and actually take the whole thing out. Okay, now that I've got it almost all the way out, of course what started happening is this started spinning the shaft that the bolt is trying to come off of. So what I'm doing is coming in here with a pair of needle nose pliers and twisting that to kind of bind that up while I still take it off with the impact. And there we go, we're free. Okay, to get your bearing straight here, the uh, swing bar link is right there, and this is coming over to the bushing that holds the sway bar to the chassis of the vehicle. These are also 14 millimeters, I'm gonna back them out. And there we go. All right, guys, the reason I went ahead and took this completely off is because of these back fasteners. They're up against the suspension parts of the vehicle and they're kind of hard to get to. This will also make it easier to film and show what I'm up to. Now to demonstrate how to get these off if you do not have an impact wrench, Honda has designed it so that you can use an Allen wrench to hold the shaft still while you're turning the 14 millimeter with a box wrench. So you would hold it like this and then loosen or tighten as needed. Now this can be a real pain and these tend to strip easily. So good luck to you if you live up north, get ready to cut these off. Now this is the aftermarket part I decided to go with. They're made by a company called Moog. Now here are the part numbers. What I like about the replacement is that it has grease fittings. So if things start to get a little noisy down the road, you can just grease them up. And also it doesn't use that Allen wrench method, but rather you hold it at the back here with an 18 millimeter the aftermarket on the top nut is now 15 millimeters, not 14. Then you can tighten or loosen it without the shaft spinning. So I'm ready to reattach the one for the passenger side. You just slide it through and then you go ahead and tight this all the way up. The joints move all around so they allow you to move it in the proper position even after it's bolted down. All right, and this, looking back under here, this is where we're going after to get this back through. I'm 
Remember, you have to hold the back on this particular model with an 18 millimeter, and then it's 15 millimeters on the front. Now it's just a matter of pulling your sway bar back up and reattaching it, attaching it with the uh, 14 millimeter fasteners. All right, after I've got the uh, sway bar back reattached, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna check out both of my end links and make sure nothing looks bound up it can get kind of flipped kind of wonky when you take it out and you put it back in like I just showed you how to do. But this looks good right here how I have it. Now this brings me one step closer to getting Project Element suspension sorted out. If you're enjoying the series so far, please be sure to like the video and leave a comment down below. That does help me out a great deal. I do read all of the comments and I respond back to most of them that are questions. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.